Hello everyone, so in this video I would like to talk about the Bamanford algorithm. The Bamanford algorithm is an algorithm that you can use to find the shortest path from one of your vertices to all other vertices in the graph. So it is kind of similar to Dijkstra's algorithm with the key difference that Dijkstra's algorithm can only be used if the graph has only positive edge rates whereas the Bamanford algorithm can also be used for some graphs with negative edge rates. So before we start with the actual algorithm, we need to make two assumptions. So first of all, we need to assume that the graph does not contain a negative circle. In the literature, if you do some research, then you may find that we have to assume that the graph does not contain a negative circle because otherwise the shortest path does not exist. But this statement is actually wrong. So a shortest path, even for graphs with negative circles, a shortest path does always exist because the shortest path has at most n minus one vertices. The reason why we have to assume that the graph does not contain a negative circle is simply because the Bamanford algorithm is not designed to handle negative circles. Similar to the concept of a path, there is this concept of a walk. And the difference is simply in a path, we are only allowed to visit each vertex at most once. Whereas in a walk, we can visit each vertex as often as we want. So if we are looking at a problem where we want to find the shortest path in a graph, and if the graph contains a negative circle, then indeed in such a graph there doesn't exist the shortest walk. Because if there's a negative circle, we could just go round and round this negative circle, and our shortest walk or our current walk gets shorter and shorter, and as a consequence there doesn't exist the shortest walk. But Again, a shortest path does exist. And assumption number two we need to make is that the underlying graph is a directed graph. But that's not a strong assumption because if the graph is an undirected graph, we simply replace each undirected edge by two directed edges pointing in opposite directions. With that, we get a modified graph and this graph is a directed graph and we can simply apply the Babenford algorithm to that modified graph. Okay, so let's just look at the Babenford algorithm based on this example here. So I, here I have a graph with seven vertices. We have a source vertex A, a target vertex G. It's a directed graph and there are no negative circles in this graph. Throughout the algorithm, we keep track of a distance value and the predecessor value for each of these vertices A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. All of these values I will keep track in this table below. And the algorithm consists of a number of iterations. So in total, we have at most six iterations, so six is the number of vertices, which is seven minus one. So at most we will have seven minus one iterations. And in each iteration, we do the same thing. We simply look at each edge and perform an update if an update is needed. And these updates are updates for those values for the distance and the predecessor value in the table. So this is done in every iteration. We do this at most six times. And after that, the algorithm terminates and the values in this table will tell us the shortest paths from A to all other vertices, including vertex G. Okay, so let's just run the Babin Ford algorithm and I believe this will become very clear very quickly. So we are in iteration one and we need to look at all edges. So I just look at all the edges starting in A in the beginning, but it doesn't matter in which order you consider the edges in one iteration. 
you will always end up with the same result. Okay, so the first edge is the edge A to D. The distance to A is zero, but we haven't reached D yet. So the distance to D is still infinity. So going from A to D with this edge gives us a shorter path from A to D. So we perform an update since 12 is smaller than infinity. So the distance of D becomes now 12. And since we are coming from A, the predecessor of D becomes A. For the other outgoing edge of A from A to C, it's very similar. We can now reach C with a distance of minus one and the predecessor is A since we are coming from A. Okay, and this is exactly the type of update which is performed for every edge. And we now just continue doing these updates. So next of all, we look at the outgoing edges of B. We haven't reached vertex B yet, so the distance to vertex B is still infinity. So going from B to A or from B to E does not improve any of those distance values in the table. So for those two edges, we do not perform any update. The next edge is C to F. We know how to reach C already. It has a distance of minus one. So with this edge, we can reach F at a distance of zero. And we are coming from C, so the predecessor of F is simply vertex C. From D to C, we can reach D at a distance of 12. And going from D to C gives us a path to C of length 13. But 13 is larger than minus one, so we get a new path to C, but that path is longer than the shortest path we already know. So 13 is larger than minus one. So again, we do not need to perform any updates here. For the other outgoing edge of D to vertex B, however, we get an improvement because now we can also reach B. We update the distance value of B to 12 plus nine, which is 21, and we are coming from D. We haven't reached E yet, so no updates are performed here. From F, we can go to D. We get an improvement, and also for the first time, we can go to G. So we get the distance value of G to be two, and the predecessor of G becomes F. And finally, we're looking at the outgoing edge of G, but no updates are performed here. Okay, so we have now looked at all edges once. For each edge, we looked at the table and for some edges, we did perform an update. And those values here, they give us the distances of the currently shortest paths that we know to each vertex. Iteration two is the same as iteration one. So everything from now on is basically just a repetition of what we have already seen. So I just go through iteration two, but a bit quicker. So outgoing edges of A, nothing happens. Outgoing edges of B, so no improvement to vertex A, but we now can reach vertex E. So we can reach e, vertex E at a distance of 29 and we are coming from B. The next update that is performed, no, we do not perform any update here. So from C to F, nothing happens. But from D to B, we can now reach vertex B at a distance of 15. So 15 is better than 21, but we are still coming from the same vertex D, so we do not update the predecessor of vertex B. And for all remaining edges, we do not perform any updates, so I'll just skip this, and we are done with iteration two. And we just need to go through the entire thing a third time. We're in iteration three now. 
this edge is the only edge at which something happens in iteration three. We are in vertex B and going to E gives us 15 plus eight is 23. So the distance value of E becomes 23, but the predecessor is still vertex B. Okay, iteration three is already done. We are in iteration four. So let's have a look which edges we need to update in iteration four. Oh, okay, so no updates have been performed. So in iteration four, so I've looked at all the edges, you can believe me, no updates have been performed and we are in iteration five. So iteration five, we can now again look at all edges and see if we perform any updates. But what we can do is, since we haven't performed any updates in iteration four, we can simply terminate the algorithm now. Because no updates have been performed in iteration four, that means we haven't changed any of those values in the table. And as a consequence, we will not perform any updates in iteration five or in any later iteration. So if we do not perform any update in any iteration, the algorithm is done and those values in the table tell us already the shortest paths from A to every vertex. So the algorithm is done, but how do we now get the shortest paths from A to every vertex? This is very simple. So just look at those vertices in the table. So we do not need to look at vertex A because it's our source vertex, but let's look at the next vertex B. The predecessor of B is D. So all we need to do is look at vertex B, look at the predecessor and highlight the edge from D to B in green. We do the same for the next vertex C, predecessor is A, so we highlight edge A to C and so on. So for D we are coming from F, from E we are coming from B, from F we are coming from C and from G we are coming from F. And that's already everything. So now once we have done that, we have this green subgraph and this green subgraph is always a tree. And the paths in this tree, they tell you the shortest paths from A to every other vertex. So for example, if we want to go from A to our target vertex G, it's just A, C, F, G. If we want to go to vertex B, we need to go A, C, F, D, B. There's exactly one path for each of those vertices. Okay, that's the Batman Ford algorithm. Finally, last slide to wrap this thing up. Just a short summary of everything what we have seen. We have two assumptions. Assumption number one is we do not have a negative circle in our graph. But just as a side comment, you can use the algorithm to find or to check whether the graph has a negative circle. And assumption number two was the graph has to be a directed graph. If the graph is not a directed graph, you can simply replace undirected edges by direct by two directed edges. And if in an iteration no update is performed, you can terminate the algorithm and obtain the shortest paths immediately. Last but not least, here's a table comparing some of the features of the Bevenford algorithm with Dexford's algorithm. Some important things are just Bevenford algorithm. We have positive and negative weights, so you can apply it for positive and negative edge weights as long as there is no negative circle. Dijkstra only works for positive weights. And the running time of the Bevenford algorithm is slower. So Bevenford algorithm is slower than Dijkstra's algorithm. This is not surprising since the Bevenford algorithm can be applied also to graphs with negative edge weights, but this comes at the cost of a somewhat larger computation time.
that's all for the Batman Ford algorithm. Thank you very much for watching.